Hi, I'm Mike Brown, an internationally recognized photographer and trainer. This tutorial is an excerpt from my Masterclass in Photography online course. If you like my teaching, click the top right of your screen at any time to get seven more completely free lessons from the 105 which make up the course. I mean, why wouldn't you? Where to focus, which aperture to use, at which focal length, for which depth of field is all kind of homogenous. It blends together. I am so sorry. There is no hard and fast definitive rule. Also, to add to the confusion, different lenses have different infinity points in different places and all that sort of stuff. So the only way you are ever going to find out is to practice for yourself. Set yourself up some shots and see what happens. Look. We've got a shot going off into the distance. This is exactly the sort of shot where you are going to need to think about where to focus and which aperture to use. On my camera I can bring up the depth of field scale, which I have got across the bottom. The focus point is here on this first blue pole. We're using a wide aperture. The lens is about 50 millimetres. If I focus on that pole, I think you can already see the depth of field scale is saying we're focused just under five meters away and the blue bit either side is showing how much depth of field there is and it isn't much. We just take that shot and review it. You can see that that foreground blue pole is sharp but the background where those people are walking up the beach that isn't. That's all soft and out of focus so you'd have to think where to focus. If you wanted to focus on the people who are of course leaving the shot now, but if you want to focus all the way down the beach on them, then you would change the focus point and now we've shifted it. Now when you zoom in, the foreground, this end, is a little bit soft and we have shifted our focus off to the distance to those two walking up the beach. Then of course we can add into the confusion apertures because if we put the focus back on that first blue pole, like this, we go to the smallest aperture, which has the most depth of field superpower. Watch what happens on our depth of field scale. We're focusing in the same place, but look, that little blue line is now stretching out either side of the white one. The white one says we're focusing, what, nearly five meters away, and the blue says depth of field is stretching that far either side. Let's repeat it for you so you can see it, F4, you see the blue bits are tiny at f22, they're considerably bigger. So that means even at f22 focusing there, our shot isn't going to be fully sharp front to back. Zoom in, move across, you see that background is still slightly soft. So you'd have to think about where to focus and the only way to find out is to try things. So let's move our focus over to this red hut here. I'm gonna move it up there so that, whoops, now our depth of field has got much bigger, look. You see our scale is saying from just below five meters pretty much to infinity. Now if we have a look at that, I think you'll find that pretty much everything in that shot is sharp. Virtually, yes. So this scenario, where you have got things going into the distance, that is where you do need to pay attention on where to focus. And you'll learn where to focus by practicing and trying different apertures and different focus distances. But then there are the situations where the entire shot, the whole subject, is further away, is beyond infinity, and then it doesn't matter at all. Let's go and find one. It's quite nice sitting out here in the sunshine, looking out across the pond, which there's no water in it. When there is water in there, you get a lovely reflection of the houses and these reeds just sort of in the foreground here, but that's beside the point. There isn't any water in it. The point is, when you look across the pond here, if I move my focus point, it's purposely blurry, if I put it here onto the foreground, onto those reeds and focus, look, everything is still sharp. Even the background is sharp. Look at the aperture. It's the widest aperture. So the superpower of making the background go soft, of depth of field, is not working because when you look at the distance scale, we're focusing right out pretty much at infinity. So it doesn't matter where you focus in a scene like this. You can focus anywhere. Let's move the focus point and put it down here on the lake. No difference. Let's put it on the houses on the other side of the pond. No difference. Let's pop it on this tree over here. 
still, no difference. Everything is sharp. If you wanted these reeds down here in the bottom right corner, if you wanted them to be sharp and the house is blurry, you can't because everything in this composition is beyond that infinity point. I just want you to understand this because you might be thinking, what am I doing wrong? Why can't I blur the houses? I've got my widest aperture. You're up against the laws of physics. Once you get to infinity, it can't be done. You may have seen shots like this, but that will have been done in post-production. Maybe one shot taken blurry, another shot taken sharp, and then the two sort of merge together into one picture. Infinity is just a useful thing to understand and know about. It's not something you've got to necessarily worry about. But also that question, that eternal question, where do I focus in my picture? Well, if you've got things closer to the camera, that's when you need to think about it more, such as with the beach huts. But when you've got a scene like this where everything's way off over there, it genuinely doesn't matter.